Hey guys, it's Tyler Williams, and today I'll be telling you about St. Petersburg Paradox, written by uh, this guy over here, and uh, I just hope you enjoy my presentation. So, basically, the the whole idea behind this concept is it's a way to look at human decision making, and so when I tell you more about the game that comes with it later, it's not really about that, it's more about looking at how, what are you willing to give up to get something. Okay, so it was published in 1738, but it was introduced by the guy who published its brother. So it was it was introduced by um, Nicholas over here, um, Bernoulli, and then it was published by Daniel Bernoulli in 1738. And then the whole idea was made more concise by Kramer, and then those ideas are now um, heavily present today. And so it introduced the idea of decreased marginal utility, and I'll explain that uh, in a sec. And so basically, there's a game. It's The whole thing is based off St. Petersburg game, and so... There's an entry cost to the game, so you have to pay to enter it, but depending on how many times the coin is flipped heads or flipped tails, whichever one you want, it flipped the desirable outcome, you get that amount of money. But it has to be in a row, and then once you flip the other outcome that you don't want, the game stops. And so the essential question is, what are you willing to pay to maybe get um, a technically infinite sum of money? Now, if what I said seems a bit complicated, let me give you a visual. And so, the first thing that we need to do is assume that everything is fair, and that these cards are the coins that I mentioned earlier. And so, let's assume that these cards are being spit out by a machine, okay, randomly either face up or face down. Okay, so face up or face down. And so, if the card comes out face up, you get $2, right? And then if the second one also comes out face up, you get 4 The next one comes up face up, you get 8 Okay, it's pretty simple. And so the game could technically get you an infinite amount of money. But here's the thing, there's an entry cost to the game. So the question is, how much should you be willing to pay? And so if you think about it, the chances of you getting over three flips face up in a row is not that high. So you wouldn't want to pay more than $8. But there, are, since you are technically getting an infinite amount of money, if you get an infinite amount of these cards face up, the entry cost could potentially be much higher. So the question becomes, how much should you pay for a chance at getting an infinite amount of money? Okay, so now that you understand the game a little bit more, we can talk about the math side of the paradox. And so it's a summation, right? And the math is pretty easy. We've done this before. And so it's a summation of n to 1 to infinity, right? And so it's z the chance that you get the desired outcome, which is 1 and 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of n, which is the money that you'll be getting. And so if you do the math, it'll be 1 every single time, no matter what n is. And then if it's 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that'll effectively be infinity, making the, like, the money that you get infinity if you the decreasing chances that you actually get the desired outcome continue to happen. right? And so when this paper came out, a lot of people had problems with it. Um, they liked the idea overall, but they had a few problems with it. And so many disagreed with the possibility of potential infinite utility, because if you think about it, you, even if you could get an infinite supply of money, then that would diminish the supply of money overall. So you couldn't actually get infinite utility out of it, infinite satisfaction. And so that was one problem. And the second thing is that people said you shouldn't even consider this because it couldn't happen. And while, Technically, it has a possibility of 0% that it happens. Things with a possibility of 0 do happen. And it's not really about the actual experimental probability of it happening. It's just about the fact that it's a decision-making thing and we can see how people will act based on you know the diminishing chances that they get it. And so this is an, an economics thing. And so a lot of the concepts that I've been talking about, you guys should be able to understand. And so... <clears throat> It helps a lot when discussing marginal utility because if you think about it, like how much more satisfaction is it going to bring you to get that extra few billion dollars when you already have trillions of dollars, right? And it's it's also like a good look into the human behavior because, you know, like should you actually do this? Do you want to lose money? Because as Alfred Marshall says, you will lose money every time if you continue to keep on doing it. And so this chart over here kind of explains it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you guys out. All right, I get that that last graph was a little confusing, so let me explain it to you. So first, you draw a normal marginal utility graph, which slopes down like this, you've taken the economy you'd know, and um, you'll have marginal utility up here and money down here. And so let's assume there's a point X in the middle where 
going to be without winning or losing if you don't play. That's where your marginal utility is. And so if you win, you'll get x plus 1, right? And then if you lose, you'll get x minus 1. You see, the area here is bigger than the area over here. See, as the marginal utility slopes down, so that means that you will normally be losing. So if you if you do this an infinite amount of times, you will lose more money than you gain, and that's why you should never do this. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And after watching this, I hope you can apply some of the decision-making things that were discussed in this video in your life. Thank you.